Hey guys, did you know that if you want to go abroad to study, there's another alternative other than IELTS or TOEFL, there's a test that you can take called the Duolingo English test. Today, we have Josh McPherson on the show to tell us all about the exam and all of the things that we need to know to take this exam this year. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, Josh, to All Ears English. I'm so excited to have you here. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's a real honor. Really Awesome. Guys, for our sure. listeners today, we have a guest on the show. His name is Josh McPherson from TST Prep. He focuses on TOEFL preparation, and I'm excited to talk about test prep today. But Josh, I heard that you are from New York City. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, uh, it's, you know, I say New York City, but it's actually Long Island. So uh, okay. it's uh, a place called Valley Stream. Yeah. So a little bit outside of it. It's close a little to Queens. Outside. All right. But yeah. you grew up in New York. I mean, that is a lifestyle, right? That's a life. I lived in New York for a little while in Brooklyn and right. Manhattan. Tell me something. Nice. Tell our audience something that we maybe we don't know about New York City and the New York City lifestyle. Sure. Uh, well, New Yorkers don't go to tourist attractions for the most <laughs> part. I, I, I think I think is the biggest thing. When it, when the people hear that I'm from New York, they ask me about the Empire State Building, Statue yeah. of Liberty, Times Square. I say I avoided them my whole life. Hundred uh, <laughs> percent. My my parents were not interested in any of those places. I never went to any of them. And only after I moved abroad and came back to New York and lived in New York. I lived in Queens and Astoria for a while. Yeah. Uh, when I came back, then I actually went to those places more and started appreciating them a bit more. I love it. I love it. Yeah. That's so true. When I lived there, I used to hang out around Union Square a lot. Right. And to me, that was like the Times Square for locals. Right, um, right. Yeah, yeah. The, kind of, the cool Times Square. It's the, the cool Times Square. But yeah. I guess our listeners, if they do visit New York, I mean, how can you go and not swing through Times Square? Right. Of course. But, yeah. yeah. So balance hey, it out, it, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an experience. And you, you definitely should do the tourist stuff. I, I do recommend it. But uh, yeah, for people who live there, it's like, <laughs> the, the oh, it's so busy. It's so expensive. You yeah. Know, it's the last place you want to go. Absolutely. I love it. So it's great to have a New Yorker on the show. And let, so today, Josh, we're actually not talking quite as much about TOEFL. We're going right. to talk about the new kid on the block, right? The new test that's right. out there, which is the Duolingo English test. And I first heard about this right when the pandemic came out because, sure. you know, we do IELTS here at Allers English. We don't do TOEFL. Mm. And I saw this on the horizon and we want to learn more about it and where sure. it's coming from, why people are choosing this test and you know, who might want to go for this. So can you give us a little bit of background about this exam? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I think most people are in the same boat as you that they didn't really know about this test until uh, the pandem pandemic, really. Yeah. Um, TOEFL and IELTS and these bigger tests, traditionally, you take them only in a testing center. Sure. Uh, and so with COVID and, and with the pandemic, the, the testing centers were closed for a long time. Yes. And uh, some of them are still closed now. Right. And so, <laughs> uh, you know, IELTS and TOEFL, I know more about TOEFL than IELTS. TOEFL, yep. they, they eat, responded by having an online version of the test. Okay. Uh, the uh, TOEFL test online or, or something like that. It's mm -hmm. still available now and students can still take it. But that was a response probably six months or so after the pandemic when things were really dragging on. Yes. Uh, so there were students who couldn't wait. Uh, wanted to uh, apply to university or college in the States or in Canada. Yeah. And the universities turned to the Duolingo English test because okay. it, really it was the only thing that was available at the time that students could take online. Interesting. So I'm, yeah. yeah. And how, so tell us a little bit about the format of the test of our listeners have never heard of it. They've never seen it. I mean, where do we take it? What does it look like? All sure. of those details, just a little bit. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend going to Duolingo English Test, I think .com or something like that. And mm -hmm. there's a free practice test, 15 minutes, really simple. And I think the biggest difference between this test and IELTS or TOEFL is that it's simple, actually. Um, yeah. I, IELTS and TOEFL are pretty complicated, hard tests that you yeah. have to learn about. Um, you have to learn mm -hmm. how to take the test, how to answer the questions, and so yes. on. Yes. There's a little bit of that in Duolingo English test, but there's only 10 questions in total. Oh my gosh, uh, 10 for, questions. There, so there's 10 questions. Uh, let me rephrase that. 10 question types in total. Okay. okay. Uh, so, so 10 question types in total. And a 
probably about, uh, I'd have to look at my documents, but about 50 questions in total. So a lot fewer questions, mm. fewer questions. Um, and the 10 question types are pretty simple to understand. I mean, you know, yeah. you, you take a practice test, you see them once each and you get a good sense of what to do. I could talk in more detail about each type, but, but really yeah. that's the general sense of, of what it is. It's much okay. simpler. Okay. It's more simple and you do it at home. Is that right? Are there test centers for this or is it hundred percent? Could you do it on a mobile as well? Are we talking about taking a test while we're going to the right, train right. or what are we talking about here? I, I, so <laughs> well, one, one big thing with uh, any test uh, that TOEFL is, you talks about and IELTS and so on is security. Um, yes. So they, so, so they have to make sure it's a secure test and the, and the scores are reliable. So no, you can't take it on your phone. I'm okay. pretty sure about that. Uh, you have to take it in a, uh, a room and you can't be interrupted. There's mm. a camera on you the whole time that tracks your eye movement. So, mm. uh, so you actually can't look down at your desk. So you can't take notes during this, uh, test you, you, so, and if you, you know, if you look away, if somebody comes into your room, the test score is canceled immediately. So uh, one, one way that they try to make sure that it's secure is by having very strict rules that the students have to follow. Now, this is a good thing. You could take it online. It's secure. It's also a bad thing because some students just, they get their test scores canceled, you know, over and over and over again. And they're very frustrated, you know, right. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm looking at my computer, but they, they cancel my score. My, my uncle came into my room and canceled, you know, whatever it is. <sighs> That does sound yeah. frustrating. Uh, and so what institutions are accepting this? Are we seeing, I've heard some big name places. I, you can let us know. I mean, who's accepting it yeah. now? And where do you see this going in terms of its place in the world of aisle, of the big guys, right? The IELTS, the right. TOEFLs. Where do you see IELTS, uh, the du Duolingo test coming up? What do you see its place? Uh, so, uh, well, you know, I couldn't list all the schools because there's over 15,000 schools oh, wow. uh, that, that accept it at this point. So nice. it, it was probably a couple hundred a year ago or less than a thousand a year Whoa, ago. And in okay. one year it's, it's grown to, to, I, I don't know the percentages, but a lot of schools in North America, except okay. so if you're okay. applying, if you're applying to go to school in USA or Canada, you mm -hmm. probably can take the Duolingo English test instead of the IELTS or TOEFL. And especially if you're going for an undergraduate degree, oh, okay, uh, if good. you're going for like an MBA or uh, something like that, it might be different, but mm -hmm. in general, if you're, if you want to, uh, if you want to study abroad in the U S or the, or Canada, or even the UK, you probably can take the Duolingo English test. Okay, good to know. Very exciting. And it is a bit cheaper. Is that right? How much does it cost to take this test? Yeah, so it's uh, $50. Okay. Um, and so the TOEFL is like 200, 220. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes about between 30 minutes and an hour to finish. Okay. Uh, okay. The TOEFL takes three and a half hours. So uh, yes. if you have a choice, it's as a student, if you have a choice, it's yeah. kind of a no brainer. You, you should it's a no brainer. The, yeah. Just take the test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes me think about, you know, for the IELTS exam, because our listeners know we do a lot of IELTS stuff here. Right. A lot of it is about getting to know the test, which right. in some ways you think about it, it's not quite fair because how does that test my fluency by just knowing the test? So it sounds like Duolingo is really trying to address just how fluent are you? Right. Yeah. I yeah. think that's one of the strengths of, of the test, actually, is that when you actually see the question types, they're mm -hmm. kind of hard in, in a way that's like either, you know, it or you don't, uh -huh. you know, you couldn't really uh, like I have a course on it. You know, I teach students about it. Mm -hmm. I teach strategy about it and that kind yeah. of thing. But it's not really as heavy on strategy as it would be for TOEFL. Like it, it, the strategy is, is much lighter. Yeah. Um, you know, okay. and, and so I encourage students to kind of just, uh, you know, use some strategy practice with Duolingo English tests, materials and stuff like that. But then also just, you know, if you're not doing well, you, you kind of need to get your English up, you know, however you want to yeah. do that. Um, and it, yeah. besides just test prep, um, sure. I think there is, you know, IELTS and TOEFL do have some, what's called in the field washback, which is like through the process of preparing for the test, you do improve your skills in English. Sure. Um, sure. you mm -hmm. know, e even though for TOEFL, they have a, 
a reading question that's like a negative factual information question. You know, you'll never need to know that except for TOEFL. Right. Uh, but, you know, by learning about this question type, you could improve your English skills. There is mm -hmm. some argument for that. But for the most part, Duolingo is much better at reducing the amount of test jargon you have to learn. Absolutely. I think this is a good thing. I mean, anything that can lower the barrier for our, our listeners, right. Our students right. to live their dreams because, you know, here we like to talk about, okay, once we get past IELTS, what's the goal? Keep in mind the dream right. life that you want. You want to move your family somewhere. You want a job in a lab in a university somewhere. What do you want? Right. So this is right. going to lower the barrier to entry. Are there any drawbacks to taking this test that you can think of? Yeah, I mean, you know, for administrators, it's new. So if you're an administrator, yeah. you might be a little nervous about the if the, the test is uh, accurately representing if, if students are ready to go to university. Uh, the mm -hmm. TOEFL is designed for academic uh, yes. life. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that I, I this isn't really a drawback for the test, but just something students should know is yep. that it's probably not going to be accepted for like professional stuff. Like yeah. so, some, stu so okay. some students take TOEFL to be a nurse or right. to be right. a pharmacist or okay. something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. it, that dual English test probably won't go to those fields. Um, right. Where, okay. And it'll, it'll stay in the kind of university landscape. So, it, you know, if you're listening to this and you want to be a licensed pharmacist and you're hoping to take the dual English test, I would say I wouldn't count on that day okay. uh, to come. It, it's mostly for, and seems to be fitting university uh, applications. Okay. And undergrad, mostly you said just undergrad, not I, as much PhD, uh, master's. I would, I would know. say yes. Um, okay. for the most part, I think it depends on the school. Uh, so mm -hmm. definitely as I always recommend contact your school, Yeah, uh, but, cool. but yeah, it should be, uh, it's mostly for undergraduates because you know, the test it is simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if somebody is going to be an MBA student, they have to have a, uh, I mean, it, it's pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're going to be an MBA student, you, sh you know, in a way you should sit down and learn an exam and show the ability to do that in a way that right. is a test in itself of, of ability to study and sit down and character and that kind of thing. I guess you could think of it that way. Right. Um, Interesting. Okay. So there's, like we said before, there's a new player in town. Very interesting. Um, Josh, let us know where our listeners can go to learn more about this test and learn more about what you do with the TOEFL exam and to connect with you. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I'm pretty uh, active on YouTube. So if you just Google TSC prep or TOEFL, you'll probably find our, our uh, channel. Okay. And also the website tscprep.com. We have a lot of free practice for TOEFL right now and Duolingo in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have a bunch of free practice as well. So uh, yeah, the, the website and YouTube will be great. All right. Thanks for hanging out today. It's been great to, to talk with you today, Josh, and meet with you. And guys, go over and check out Josh's website and what he's doing on YouTube. All right. Thanks a lot, Josh, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Lindsay. Take care. Bye. Bye.